you ask one patient sitting in the queue outside the dialysis room waiting for his turn of dialysis in a government hospital ramaya what is your problem your kidney failed generally how do you feel he will tell you entire harrison central medicine story you read in harrison central medicine you will forget but you hear one ramaya or bimaya's story i'm telling you honestly no jokes about it forever you will remember he will tell doctor i was all right doctor the sugar bima re started few days back after that this kidney is gone is what i was told i get all this nausea vomiting backache i don't feel like eating i feel very lethargic i have somnolence i am feeling weak asphyxis all these clinical features patients can have restless legs because uremia lead to neuropathy and neuropathic pain in the legs which is relieved only by movement of the legs gives the name called restless legs is another important feature and in the patients of chronic kidney disease what is kidney important for vitamin d vitamin d become active vitamin d 1 alpha i mean 125 dihydroxy vitamin d because of the 1 alpha hydroxylase in the kidney kidney is gone there is no active vitamin d if it is not there patient will have hypocalcemia and how does hypocalcemia pr present with lethargy confusion in case of the chronic kidney disease kidney produces erythropoietin if erythropoietin is not there bone marrow cannot produce rbc's hence there will be normocytic normochromic anemia presence of urea excessively in the blood will make platelets dysfunctional qualitatively dysfunctional it is not thrombocytopenia it is dysfunctional platelets so bleeding secondary to the platelet dysfunction can occur so erf versus crf number 1 is duration which will make you to differentiate the two number 2 is the history of hypertension diabetes presence of edema etc which favor chronic kidney disease if you do renal ultrasound kidney size decreased that is another in indicator of chronic kidney disease but there are exceptions if the chronic dis kidney disease is because of diabetes <coughs> or amyloidosis in spite of chronic kidney disease the kidney size won't come down and if the chronic kidney disease is because of the polycystic kidney disease instead of decreasing in size you will find larger kidneys so diabetes amyloidosis polycystic kidney disease are the important scenarios where chronic kidney disease doesn't reflect with small kidney size is what you need to basically remember then hyperkalemia acidemia hyperphosphatemia and anemia they can occur in both arf and also crf then urine output less than 500 per day without any urinary symptoms is more likely of acute and urinary cause which are broadcast broad waxy cause are more of an indication of chronic kidney disease is what need to be remembered now what are the endocrine manifestations of ckd ckd patients a good number of times this can be one of the major questions of ckd management of ckd with complications of ckd including its etiology and pathophysiology you must be ready to write like uh, an essay like uh, international nephrologist uh, in a state of art conference so you must be ready to write it in tomorrow's uh, final exam now what are the endocrine manifestations calcium phosphorus disturbances can be there if the kidney failed in chronic kidney disease it can't get rid of the phosphate from where is phosphate lost into urine proximal tubule is the place if the proximal tubule is dysfunctional phosphate can't be reabsorbed it is lost into urine i mean normally phosphate is lost into urine in proximal tubule the pros proximal tubule is dysfunctional phosphate is retained and retained phosphate combines with calcium and worsens the hypocalcemia 
So that's the reason there is a hyperphosphatemia. Then, uh, whenever there is a long standing hypercalcemia because of the lack of vitamin D, that hypercalcemia stimulates the parathyroid to produce parathormone, which in turn will go to the bone and resolve the bone and lead to development of osteitis fibrosa cystica, which is a manifestation of secondary hyperparathyroidism in the patients of chronic kidney disease is what need to be remembered. So the changes that occur in the bone because of the excess parathormone in case of uremic patients in chronic kidney disease is called is called as renal osteodystrophy changes in the bone one of the important locations where you find those changes in the bone is in the spine what is speciality of this spine which you are seeing here central part is porotic and edges that is the end plates are sclerotic because of that how is it looking like sclerotic porotic sclerotic sclerotic porotic sclerotic so it looks like a Rugger jersey they play no in US the typical uh, what game Rugger jersey huh? they wear that uh, black white striped uh, shirt the spine looks like that hence it is called Rugger jersey spine of uh, the renal osteodystrophy is what need to be remembered then when there is a hyperphosphatemia it will cause the calcium and phosphate to precipitate leading to the vessels to develop calcification and lead to necrosis of the skin which is called calciphylaxis is another important presenting feature of uh, chronic kidney disease where the skin develops necrosis due to calciphylaxis sexual dysfunction will be there because of the pituitary disturbances there is no production of luteinizing hormone if the LH production is diminished in the brain due to the uremia, testosterone production also get affected in the testis and that lead to development of gonadal dysfunction in the patients of CKD. Then in women there can be amenorrhea, significant pruritus can be there in the patients of uh, the chronic kidney disease. Note the fluid electrolyte disturbances in CKD. There can be volume overload, hyperkalemia, hypermagnesemia, hyperphosphatemia, metabolic acidosis, the combination in the case of the CKD. And that uremia will affect the cellular and humoral immunity. There's a reason. What is the main reason the patients of CKD will be dying, doctor? They are highly vulnerable to the infections, pneumonia. After general medicine, MD, when you take up uh, subspeciality, in India, we call super specialists. In uh, US, you, they call it a subspecialist. Because who is emperor? MD, general medicine is emperor. Everything else is, uh, you don't want to remember so much of general medicine. You want to specialize in only little thing. You become cardiologist, nephrologist. But who is the immediate genetic lineage of general medicine? Nephrology. Because in nephrology, you will handle infections, kidney dysfunction. When the kidney dysfunction is there, they will also have atherosclerosis. Due to atherosclerosis, they will have heart attacks. So there is all cardiovascular mor morbidity. So you have multi-system morbidity in case of the nephrology. So very closely related branch of the general medicine would be the subspeciality of nephrology. So infections, doctor, are very high in the patients who are having chronic renal failure. So suddenly there can be a pneumonia. When the pneumonia is there, there is a sepsis, then what will happen in a CKD patient? he may go into acute renal failure. What is that called as? Acute on chronic renal failure. Acute on chronic renal failure it is called. When there is an infection in a patient of CKD, which itself is worsening the renal function. In a patient of CKD, you call acute on chronic renal failure. Then how do you diagnose CKD? As we discussed, urine analysis, creatinine clearance, CBP, electrolytes, all these things you will order. You will get a renal ultrasound done. Generally, you will find small kidneys. If it is not small, normal kidneys, rule out whether it is ARF. Only other exception being diabetes, amyloidosis or polycystic kidney disease where CKD can be there with normal kidney size. Then in certain scenarios, if you are not sure of underlying etiology of a case of CKD, then it becomes an indication for renal biopsy. 
renal biopsy. For example, you have a patient of SLE. I'll give you an example. SLE patient is treated by giving what? Steroids. Steroids can lead to what? Which complication? Diabetes. Because of the diabetes, there can be development of CKD. So, a patient of SLE on steroids with diabetes develops CKD. You are not sure whether it is due to the chronic glomerulonephritis of the lupus or because of the underlying diabetes which is responsible for the development of CKD in her. You are not sure. Then you need to do renal biopsy and identify. Why? If the CKD that she is developing is because of the underlying lupus, underlying lupus, you need to step up your immunosuppression to prevent progression of the underlying lupus, lupus nephritis. If it is because of the underlying diabetes, there is nothing that you need to step up the immunosuppression. There will be a good number of scenarios where a patient will present with chronic kidney disease where two to three possible etiologies can be responsible for the development of CKD. Is it chronic glomerulonephritis? Is it diabetic nephropathy? Or is it due to significant hypertension which is responsible? You want to know. So that is helped out by doing the renal biopsy. Then you give AS inhibitors, they will reduce the progression of ESRD. That's the reason every diabetic patient, whenever you come across doctor, what is the most important thing you need to tell him? Since you have diabetes, you also is having hypertension. You need to be put on AS inhibitors to prevent the progression of your diabetic nephropathy. So, AS inhibitors should be, must be, have to be. Any other English adjectives? Need to be in the prescription of a patient who is having diabetes with and without hypertension. There are also a good number of studies which said, though there is no hypertension, if the diabetes is there and it is of 4 to 5 years of duration, put him on a lower dose AS inhibitor so that this diabetes in future does not lead to diabetic nephropathy. So that is the recommendation. That's the reason AS inhibitors need to be there. Then a good control of hypertension is another important thing which will prevent the rate of progression of chronic kidney disease. A patient of chronic kidney disease came to you and he presents with hypertension. You need to very aggressively manage it because hypertension if it is, un, if it is uh, under managed then the rate of progression of ESRD is much, much faster is what need to be remembered.